The world of marketing and PR has turned into quite the frenzy, and it's not easy to navigate the ever-changing landscape. Join me in my journey to learn from the best, as some of the world's top marketing and PR professionals share their stories on ways you can harness these changes to grow your brand. It's time to fuel the frenzy. So welcome to the Fuel the Frenzy podcast number one. It's exciting to um, kick off our new podcast series, and I'm especially delighted to have a phenomenal first guest, Eric Holtzclaw. Thanks so much for having me. Appreciate it. You're very welcome. I'm so delighted to have you here, and you had to be our first guest. (laughs) I mean, we've done podcasts before, so you and I, so... um, and um, and I just knew it'd be an easy breathe, ha- breathe. Is that the right thing? An easy breathe having Eric with our first one. So here we go. And I know um, Eric. I mean, you and I have talked already about our topic for today, and I think it's going to really resonate with many people. But before we get on to the topic, just quickly, why don't you give a little bit of background, Eric, about yourself? So I'm a serial entrepreneur. I did entrepreneurship before it was cool. I, I kid and say there's a movie, The Big Chill, and the friends say. You know, one of them is an entrepreneur, and all of his friends say, "Oh, that means you're unemployed." You know, that didn't wasn't yeah, the, wasn't, a job. wasn't the thing. People to do. now aspire to be entrepreneurs. Wasn't the thing to do. So yeah. I left IBM, started into the entrepreneurial journey, worked with a bunch of crazy CEOs in the '90s, owned a research company, 2002 to 2012, and now I work with companies that are struggling. So either they're not exceeding the revenue, you know, mm-hmm. they've kind of plateaued, or maybe they're growing faster than they know how to handle it. And we put a team in place for a period of time to teach them how to correct those problems. So, yeah. Sounds very good. That's a lot of fun. Yeah. And you're spinning a lot of plates. You do a lot of things. I know you also have your own podcast series as well. So so do a podcast. I write occasionally for CMO and I write for Inc. Mm -hmm. uh, a column regularly. So people Mm -hmm. always ask how I keep it going. And it's just about having a really good schedule. (laughs) Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure it is. So, uh, Eric, why don't you talk us through um, a little bit about the topic that we're going to discuss today? Because like I said, I know people are going to find it fascinating. And this has been a topic that I have also struggled with. So, Yeah, well, what's interesting, and and this was my story. Mm -hmm. I uh, had a research company. We were doing really well. We had gotten to somewhere between three and a half, four million dollars in revenue, wanted to top that, and we'd stopped growing. Mm -hmm. So I brought in a PR and marketing firm and said, take a look at what we're doing and tell me, tell me what's wrong. And they came back to me and said, the problem is that nobody knows who you are. You know everything about how the company works, what it does, Mm -hmm. and all of the equity is in the brand and there's no equity into an individual voice. And as marketers, when we walk into companies, we tell them that all the time. And they got taught back in the day that Oh, it's not about you. It's about the company. Mm -hmm. And the world changed. We want to hear from individuals. So you doing a podcast, I mean, this gets you out in front. You know, we know who Media Frenzy is, but Mm -hmm. now we know who Sarah is Mm -hmm. and what Sarah cares about and what Sarah wants to know. And it was, it was uncomfortable for me. I do all this stuff. You see me everywhere, but I am, I'm really an introvert. I would much rather kind of hide in the back of the room. Mm -hmm. Be at home, kind of push the buttons. And yeah, have allow work. other people to speak for you sometimes. Yeah. yeah. Well, and even intentionally pushing those people forward. Yeah. And we had just, everything had gone into the brand. Mm-hmm. And they were like, you've got you to start talking on stages. And I started the podcast as a way to practice. Right. It was a way for me to do research and to understand my own voice. And it was a little bit less intimidating than being on a stage. Mm-hmm. Uh, joined Toastmasters. And that was really important. And I thought it was a drinking club. But yeah, it's not. I, I thought we just toast everybody. No, <laughs> <laughs> no. But no. if you if you haven't never gone to Toastmasters, I've heard they're very good. Actually, they're yeah. very good. Yeah. So people think just about speaking, but it's also evaluation. They teach they teach you how to speak on the fly, mm-hmm. and a lot of what you're doing when you're talking with press mm-hmm. or getting out you there, you got to speak on the fly. You're right. I, yeah, I'd rather have a Q and A session than a canned speech yeah. every day of the week. Yeah, you know. So learning that and and. Many CEOs and many founders, they get hung up on standing on that stage and kind of taking that voice of the company. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's a really interesting thing to, to try to talk them around. I mean, you run into that with... Yeah, you know, we run it. I mean, at Media Frenzy, we've had situations where large and small companies where literally, um, you know, that, that CEO does not want to be the person, you know, who has that voice. Um, they might be very good at, at sharing that, um, that story internally 
you know, so sometimes they oh, can yeah. be very good at talking, you know, bringing the, the employees together. And, and actually, even that is a big challenge for many companies too. But so sometimes the internal communications can be fairly good. But then you look externally, and I think there's just such a, um, I think it's just because the world has moved on quickly. There was yeah. a time, um, you know, where the only external opportunity a CEO would get would be in front of the camera, you know, would be with a journalist, and yeah. it might be at a press conference. Um, and so that was kind of fine. The CEO didn't need to have that. Mm -hmm. That, But now I think with social media um, and that people want to hear from the CEO directly. It's yeah. not even the handle sometimes of the company. It's like the Twitter handle of that, you know, the personal Twitter handle of the CEO. Well, and I'll see a, a company share something and no one cares. Mm -hmm. But then the CEO or an employee or mm -hmm. someone within the company yeah. shares it. And because it comes from a person, there's this connection. Like yeah. There's some heft behind it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there are multiple reasons, and I can think of about three that mm -hmm. are reasons why CEOs, I'd love to see if... if I would love that those top tips from you, Eric. <laughs> Please so, share them. Well, there are three sort of misconceptions <laughs> okay. about why leaders don't okay. stand in front of the, the microphone and kind of, you know, own that stage. Mm -hmm. One is they see that it, they think it's self-serving. Right. And, and I ran into that. Mm -hmm. When I started doing the podcasting and standing on stages... I had a business partner who looked and thought, I just want, I had an ego right. and I needed to feed you know, the that platform ego. To, yeah. And I, I was like, dude, if I didn't have to do this, I'd much rather be back in my office, yeah. pushing the buttons and making things work. It's yeah. not natural for me. Mm -hmm. so, do you think some people feel uncomfortable? They think that it looks like they're trying to just profile themselves. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. And I get, I get. I get that feedback often because mm -hmm. I have the Eric V. Holtzclaw brand and then I also have my Laddering Works company. Mm -hmm. So there's the, the two things yeah. and they are meant to feed each other. So you come to Eric V. Holtzclaw for education, mm -hmm. for knowledge. It's all about giving back. There's really not a call to action for a purchase right. or a project. Right. And then if you self-identify, then you move over to the Laddering Works brand, right. which is my consulting organization. Right. So you, you almost need to establish both. And and the interesting thing is you always have your name. You may not always be with that company. Mm -hmm. That's true. Companies That's a very are good point. Companies are temporary. Mm -hmm. You're so. going to go somewhere else. You are. Yeah. So it's worth building your own brand around your, you know, who you are. Right. And if you think of, you know, the mm -hmm. Gary Vaynerchuks and mm -hmm. you think of, you know, Jeff Bezos, I mean, we know the names. Yes. And back in the day, which I'm talking about back in the day is, I won't, I won't say <laughs> part of your career. Start of my career. <laughs> I'm getting on to, but yeah. <laughs> you only knew the company. Yes, and that's so true. Occasionally yeah. you knew the CEO. And typically because the CEO had done something, maybe they shouldn't, shouldn't have, done. have done. That's right. when they speak. And that's that's the worst situation where they have no presence before that point, yet something happens and they go and speak out. Right. So it's like that's kind of damaging in itself. It's great that they've spoken out, but there's nothing. There's no historical viewpoints on them because they've never gone out there before. I've never gone out, and no. there's no reason for the the public to no. forgive them. No, you it's know, very I know true. You as a person, mm -hmm. I know maybe this was just a mistake. Mm -hmm. You know, all of a sudden the company gets tarnished, and we see that in some of these big headlines recently yeah so the first so that's is the, one okay yeah, first is that's a good one though yeah is that i, yeah. I don't want to be seen as yeah. you know I, the employees think that i have this huge ego and that mm -hmm. i really want to you know it's okay to have an ego it is okay it's and okay fact, if you are leading a business you probably have one yeah i mean you should have an ego i mean you're doing something quite incredible yeah you're probably I, pretty arrogant yeah you, <laughs> sometimes you and you need to be thick-skinned and you just you know you got to be um i mean you're leading a company you, it, people are in, you know, aspi aspiring to be like you to some extent. You should right. be proud of that. Yeah, that's so my view anyway. I agree. Yeah, okay. I agree. And, and that's why people follow you. I mean, mm -hmm. if you start a business, you convince people to come to work for you for less maybe than they were making before. They buy into the dream. Mm -hmm. You know, there's it's all true. this. And it all lives in you. And no one, I've written this article before, no one can own it as much as you do. Right. right. Like, it's your story. Yeah. You cannot give that to someone. No. Right. No. So that's number one. Mm -hmm. Number two is... It kind of ties into what you just talked about a second ago. There's this thing we get taught as we go through school and as we start a business that we're going to make a terrible mistake. Right. We need in front of the camera. Yeah. We're going to say the wrong thing. We're going to blow up our business. Mm -hmm. Like they're they're afraid of yeah, making nervous. a mistake. Mm -hmm. You know that how do I how do I even have this conversation? And and I would say that I I believe and you may disagree because mm -hmm. you do. <laughs> I'm giving my viewpoint. <laughs> the PR stuff that I, I really. I believe the world is is much more forgiving in that category. So you don't have to be perfectly spoken. 
You yeah. don't have to be very polished. Mm -hmm. um, Gary Vaynerchuk mm -hmm. talks about documenting your life, mm -hmm. not being so polished. Mm -hmm. I have a problem with it because I'm not as I'm not that spontaneous. I don't right. remember to pull my phone out and you know do a Facebook Live, right? Or even know what I would talk about at that point, right? But that's often what your audience is looking for. They're looking for the pre all dressed to go to work, you know. Yeah. Non pol so it's okay to make a mistake. Yeah. People want to know who you are as a, a human being. Mm -hmm. But if you are worried about that, there are ways to go and get training on how to talk to the press, yeah. and what to say and what not to say. What What do you guys do mm -hmm. when you have like I would say a, a, a newbie to the to press? Yeah, I mean, to the press, we you know it's important. We believe they to be polished, um, but I think that's you know that's the difference. You're speaking to the to the media, and there is an expectation of you know you to make sure you know your talking points because at the end of the day, you've got to get three messages through to the media. Um, but I do uh, concur with you that, um, you know, none of us like perfectionists. Mm -hmm. It's like we, uh, you know, we like to see a little bit of rawness. So actually um, showing a level of who you really are and um, just being a little bit more yourself and if you make a mistake, um, that's okay. I mean, on social media, I believe that's okay. Um, and it's okay to admit you've made a mistake too. Uh, I still do see, and you know, we're starting to see as well much more companies moving into doing much more raw videos. I mean, literally like kind of more like, you know, spontaneous videos of what's literally going on in the company and the CEO standing up and saying something and them sharing it. That's true company culture. Yeah. You know, it's not stage. It's not being set up. It literally is. It's, it's a raw video of what really goes on. And people love that. And there's an article that was written on Inc., not mine, regrettably, that has done very well about uh, there's some entrepreneur, I don't know his name, so you can look up the article, but writes a letter to his staff every mm -hmm. Friday. Right. And it's some little inspirational piece, and it's become this, this. I mean, it's one of the most popular articles on Inc. this month where mm -hmm. the entrepreneur is doing this internal thing, and they've leaked it out, which leaking something out like that, well, number one. Well, they share what he says? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they share in the article some things that he said. read that, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and... Number one, in today's world, there's no such thing as tight on that. Mm. <laughs> so, someone yeah. will share it anonymously. There's like going to be something that gets it out there, right? Yeah. I mean, so if you if you write it, if you put it out there, you need to be okay with it, right? No, I agree. But then that does that's that mistake culture, or even if you watch like Mad Men and some of these things, or mm -hmm. when you start to talk to a PR person, mm -hmm. oh well, you know the journalists are scary mm -hmm. and they're going to try to trip you up. Yeah, I, I I've hardly ever seen that. Yeah. You know, I've been in PR now for 20 years and I've not, and, and uh, admittedly more business to business PR. Maybe right. that's a little bit different, um, but journalists aren't there to trip you up. No, no, they're not. And, and you know it going in, like yeah. if there's some controversial thing, yeah, you and, know. an important point you made that I don't do as well as I should, uh, and other CEOs have to learn is the sound bites, mm -hmm. knowing how to have that one thing yeah. that you can share. We say there's three things. Okay. So, so I mean, so, one is great, but three right. is even better yeah. because, you know, and literally you have to curve all those questions which come through from the media back to your three things. Well, I'm going to say, now I heard of that, that, that on NPR the other day. They were talking about how politicians do that where mm -hmm. you ask a question and then the person's like, well, I really think about this, but I'd really like to say this instead. Well, yeah, and I think that's an old-fashioned way of actually stopping the conversation. But you can still, if you're a good speaker, yeah. and again, this is, and you do want your CEO ideally to be able to talk off, you know, on the off fly the like this, off the cuff, where you literally can, you know, you're not stopping the conversation because I believe that is very political and it's it's kind of, I think it's an old school. But literally, you know, bring it round though to what is it that you're there to share today. Because yeah. the journalists want to take away those three messages. They've got to go write that story afterwards. If you're and going to make it complicated, they're not going to be able to gather what you're trying to say. Yeah, I had that experience just a yeah. couple of weeks ago. I was asked to cover something and got time and couldn't, I couldn't get anything from the CEO that was mm. tangible. You know, mm -hmm. was nothing. I walked away and they said, how did it go? I'm like, I don't know what the story is. Mm. I have no idea what that thing is. And if I'm going to mention somebody in my column, I'm only going to typically mention one or two sentences. So I'm looking for that key thing they mm -hmm. tell me because the rest of it's going to be, you know, about the topic mm -hmm. or what I go about. So first one is, yeah, you got to get out there and be the brand, yeah, right. And not, it's not about your ego. No. You probably have one if you yeah. stand in the we mirror. We want you to have one. Share that ego. <laughs> be nice about it. <laughs> and face it. Uh, the second is the. Don't be scared. Don't be scared. Mistakes yeah. are okay. Yeah. And the third is be a human. Yeah. 
So be a human being. Yeah. There's this, or in my opinion, you know, it's, it's like four sort of businessy things to one personal. And you know, I have, I love to wear funky socks, and mm -hmm. I have. This, I've heard about your funky yes. socks. Yes. Well, I'll tell you. Anytime <laughs> I tweet my socks, one of the best things I share that month. Really. As sad as that is, that is right? I write people these care about your socks. media articles about how to do cash flow <laughs> yeah. and how to fire yeah. an employee and what managers don't do mm -hmm. well. And then I bring out my phone and take a really... Because yeah. that's your personality though. Yeah, so you're know, sharing it. So it's yeah. that's what it's about. I agree with you. But CEOs are really afraid of that. Yeah. They're afraid to, you know, to do that. Hey, yeah. I'm at this restaurant yeah. or I just went on this trip or whatever. Mm -hmm. And you want to know the person's human. So mm -hmm. just, just the fact that you don't want to talk to your company... It's okay to make a mistake, mm -hmm. and then show me my show me the human side. Yeah, you know, for a long time I, I never talked about my uh, teenage daughter by her name. I called her preteen. So mm -hmm. I've been on social media since she was preteen, mm -hmm. and I, I would put those posts up on LinkedIn and right. talk about preteen said this or right. preteen said that, and people would run into me, and they would always remember those shares, and that would be one out of yeah, ten. Yeah, because that's the personal side. Yeah, yeah and like, that's oh. what we all love. Yeah, yeah. So you've got to be got to be yourself. Yeah. At the end of the day. And CEOs have a, a veneer often. Mm -hmm. you know, the, the I think a lot of the times as well, and it's, um, I would agree, they don't realize that they can share that. But then a lot of the times, I don't know if they know how to share it. Mm. Like, how do you find that tone which allows you to, you know, if you're quite a serious person, and there are a lot of serious CEOs out there, yeah, and because right. they've got a lot to do every day, I get it. Like, how do they kind of suddenly adapt themselves? But do you think that they're like 100% serious all the time? No, I don't. They but let their hair down on but the But maybe they don't know how to – there's still a kind of divide between going to yeah. work and going home. Yeah. Even though we know smartphones have made everything kind of come together and we are at work, we're at home, we're everywhere at the same right, time. Right. But I, st I still believe that there – some people might struggle to know, how would you – any tips you can give to a CEO who – wants to share some of that personality, but just doesn't know how. Well, I, I think if it's interesting to you, it's probably interesting to other people. Mm -hmm. and, and that, For me, that's mm -hmm. the thing. And mm -hmm. that I, I do a weekly newsletter, and my wife always says, she's like, I'm always interested to see what you're going to write about because it's right. something silly that yeah. I've... You know, oh, can you can you share one with us? Something silly? Well, about you? I mean, Come I on. shared about tiling my bathroom a couple okay. weeks ago, or mm -hmm. you know, my daughter sent me a picture of her in a kiln. She's taking ceramics mm -hmm. in college. I've seen the art that your daughter does. I'm amazed <laughs> by it. Amazed. And, and so she sent me a picture mm -hmm. of her cleaning the kiln, right. and I use that as as just a jumping off point. I did right. this little two hundred word newsletter mm -hmm. about something I took a picture about. Mm -hmm. Today's was about a tipped canoe. So okay. I talked about when I was in. When I went to summer camp, right. the first day they would take you out into the middle of the lake and tip, turn, you, over. tip you over. They oh. would swamp the canoe. I've seen that happen, yeah. And you had to learn with mm -hmm. your team mm -hmm. how to unswamp yeah. the canoe. Mm -hmm. And it requires you to take the entire boat out of the water. You have to work as a team. Mm -hmm. And that's just like a business. Mm -hmm. Like if the business starts to take on water. Yeah, how are you going to get out of it? Right. You got to bring in help. You got to lift it above your head. And mm -hmm. you got to turn it upside down. Yeah. So I like that. I love that analogy that you right. just made. I need to go read that article because that <laughs> sounds like a great analogy and something actually every CEO, I mean, the, the canoe doesn't always sit there stable and yeah. go forward. Yeah. And, and what's, what's interesting is, you know, I write these columns and I spend hours writing mm -hmm. some of them hours, mm. some of my best social media content and some of my best articles were written in a rush. Right. My best performing article was written in 30 minutes on a Sunday afternoon because I needed to write something. Mm -hmm. I hated the article, hated it. I hated it so much that when I put it up, I went in Monday morning and turned it off. I wasn't even going to publish it. And I was like, well, what else am I going to publish this week? I mm -hmm. don't have time to publish something else. Published it and it went crazy. So is that a good advice to another CEO in terms of like, you know, some, it doesn't mean you've got to sit down and spend hours trying to think about what you want to write. Just think, write what you're feeling. Right. And get the first draft out. Right? Yeah. Get that first Yeah draft out right mm -hmm. and then go back and you can clean up from it mm -hmm. and just whatever's kind of top of mind yeah you do need to find your place yeah. but you know not being so worried about the ceo feels like everything has to be so measured uh, yeah and polished and business yeah yeah and yeah. actually i think you're right tying in a personal element that's what's going to grab people in the, in the first instance because right. they want to know about you. Yes. Uh, and I think sometimes you don't know what your place is yet on social media and what your tonality is going to be until you've tried some things. Right. Try it. Like you say, see see what's happening. Oh, see I'm, where I'm certain my first tweet was like, I'm eating a, you know, a piece of cake. Right. Like, I didn't know what to do with it, right? <laughs> <laughs> if you go back, a lot of people say that. Yeah, you know, yeah. I'm drinking a glass of wine. Yeah. 
So? So? <laughs> okay, that didn't get much traction. Let's try something else. <laughs> right. Well, then that's when they stop. <laughs> yeah. It's not, they don't Yeah, they keep haven't tried playing. anything else. They don't keep playing. Try eating a cookie. You never know. Right. Well, you I mean, mean, if you drink wine and you drink yeah. lots of wine, yeah. maybe we learn that as a pattern, right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I mean, I sing a lot, so maybe I should talk more about my... You should. Yeah, the singing I career I should have had. Should have had it. You sound like my wife. Anytime okay. we go up to Nashville, they have those little places that you oh, can. Yeah, I'm there. She says if I could sing worth a while, mm -hmm. I'd I, I'd be up here mm -hmm. all the time. Mm -hmm. but, yeah. I'd be good. I'd be making lots of money. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've taken the first step. You've stepped so, out into your podcast. I have stepped out. This is um yeah. I'm very excited. Um, we. I told uh, everybody with your accent that everybody will listen. I'm hoping they all listen. I can speak really eloquent English. <laughs> and I we can have southern. tea and cucumber sandwiches later, Eric. You I, and I. I speak sophisticated Southern. Yeah, very. <laughs> yeah, you do actually. You've got a very sophisticated sophisticated voice Southern, yes so this is wonderful i mean there's been three really good top tips yes. um and i think um and it's great for marketing people to hear them because they've got to influence the ceo yeah. and then for ceos out there i'm hoping you guys are going to listen to this this is some really great advice um, um so thank you eric you're welcome thank so you for asking me if people would like to get in touch with you what is the best way for them to reach you well i'm all over twitter so that's probably my number one social media mm -hmm. channel i'm at eholdsclaw they mm -hmm. can also go to ladderingworks.com mm -hmm. which is my company mm -hmm. uh, and if you want to find out your entrepreneurial style which helps determine mm -hmm. whether or not you might be one of those people who get on a stage or not most of the time visionaries when you take the test are really good at being on stage you can go to learnyourstyle.com learnyourstyle.com that must be a new one that you've set up Okay, I need to right. check that one out myself. <laughs> so uh, that's great. Great ways to get in touch with you. Um, and Eric, this has been a wonderful conversation. So thank you so much for joining us. Thank you to our listeners. Um, Feel the Frenzy, number one. So we look forward to you joining future Feel the Frenzy podcast. Thank you. Mm -hmm.